Okay, these are all broken loose and they're on there pretty tight. So something that um, I use to help me, it's called a cheater bar. I just took the portion of my jack off for the handle and I added it to my breaker bar because this is a kind of a smaller breaker bar. And so anyway, by doing this, I had a lot more leverage and I was able to break them loose a lot better. So that's something you can do if it can help you. Also, you might have noticed that I have the axle sitting on two of my drag radials, which are probably responsible for shaking off the ABS sensor in the first place. But um, it's good to have a nice little table going on, and I might even come up with something a little better than this. All right, with these caps out of the way, we just removed here on each side and put in the respective bags so we know what side they came off of. Now the carrier will pop right out. Now the whole carrier in gear here, remember that on the sides that you have the shims, okay? That's what's, another word for the shims you could say I guess are spacers. Okay, you have them on each side and you're going to add or remove spacers to make less or more backlash, or which is the movement that the gear as it sits now can rock back and forth. So we're just going to want to make sure that we're careful as we remove this. We want to kind of keep these because it's kind of a good idea to put the same ones in and see where you are when you're setting your new gear pattern. And so you don't want to mix them up too bad if you can help it. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and lift this out of here. And uh, I'll probably need both hands for that, so sorry. Okay, the thing about this, taking the carrier out, sometimes it just falls out, sometimes you have to pry it out. I don't like prying on things, and so part of this job requires a little bit of ingenuity and to think things through. So what I did was I ran a cable that went through the bolt housing that keeps the axles in. So as you can see, I ran it and looped it around so it's not touching anything. It's not hurting any gears. It's just going through and it's just pulling on the carrier. Then I've attached that cable to a jack. So I'm just going to lift on the jack and hopefully knock this whole thing loose. Okay, now that worked like a charm. As you can see, the carrier is starting to come out now. I just want to give you a good look here to show you that I ran that cable right down the center hole and then back around the side. So as you can see I was not contacting any gears or anything. It was just pulling straight up on the carrier. As soon as I saw it came loose I stopped. Okay, just remember to be smart when you're doing these things. Don't pry with a pry bar on things and gouge things up. It's just not worth it. So that was just the technique that I used. So yours may just fall right right out. The whole housing might just come right out. Alright, as you can see, it's coming out pretty good. Just lifting straight up on it. I had to use a jack to lift it out of here. And so now the whole carrier is just going to lift right out and we'll go to the... Alright, so here's what it looks like with the whole carrier traction lock piece out of, the, out of it. They still have the pinion in there. And on the sides, these were the shims, okay, with the spacers. And I'm going to keep them, you know, separated onto their sides. I'm going to keep them so that I know which side they go back into. And these you can, you know, you'll get a whole new set of them in your kit. You should. But uh, I'm going to just kind of keep these as a, a basis to go off of. See if I have to add or subtract, but... It's kind of a good idea to see where the last setup was. And then um, I took the carrier out and I came and I set it inside of a nice box because it still has diff fluid all over it, the gear oil. And so here you have one of the races and then the bearings that's pressed onto the um, pressed onto this housing and these ones appear to be pretty good so but um, I'm getting a whole new traction lock so I'm going to press new ones on but uh, anyway th that's just how that goes together all right so now what we're going to do is take off the pinion nut and then pull the flange we're going to need a puller to get the actual flange off 
So first we're going to remove the pinion nut with a 1 and 1 16th socket. Okay, and as you notice I dropped a little bolt down in here to catch just to kind of help uh, hold it still while we do this. You can break this loose while it's on the car, I suppose, and you have the brakes to lock it up, but just, I don't know, we just waited till now. So just get a good leverage on it. Remember that this is what's holding the pinion in, so it's a good idea if you have a friend to kind of sit here and just kind of hold the bottom of the pinion. It's not likely going to drop out, but it is possible. So now just to speed this up, I'm just going to take a this impact gun that I have, just while supporting the pinion just in case. Okay, so now just supporting it, the pinion just in case. Just going to pull off the nut, and they like to use these only once, so. Um, that's good for installing the gears and, and on practice and using it for that, but make sure you do get a new pinion nut when you're here. So the next thing we're going to do is pull the flange off. And so for that we need this puller right here, or something similar. And what we're going to do is put the little feet around the sides, as you'll see, and they'll lock onto the actual flange and then as we tighten this down it'll, it's pushing against the pinion and pulling up. Okay, so the easiest way to use the puller that I've found is just to kind of get the, the maiden stud at good length where the feet come underneath and then um, then attach these up here. It's just easier to kind of move things around. So then once you get this up here it's just as simple as tightening this top bolt and it'll start pulling. So here we go, we're, we're ready. And this particular one takes a 22 millimeter socket. So remember just to, with one hand, do this, hold it on the bottom if you can, but you do have to kind of keep this from, from spinning. So once again, we can have that little nut that's down in here just to kind of help us, because it will tend to spin. Okay, so we're all set up here. My friend's going to hold this in place and then I'm just gonna turn the bolt and then just have one hand under here to catch it so that, that it doesn't fall out on me. You could tip the housing on its side if you want that might help as well but this is just the way we're gonna do it. Alright so I was able to pull up on this enough that it came loose. So here's the yoke and that's the dust shield what it's called. So now inside you just have the pinion, which we'll be able just to punch right out. And then this is the seal, the pinion seal. So um, that's what you have in there. Okay, now I'm just putting one hand underneath it to catch the, the pinion and then this one. You can see it's moving down. Just pound it out and catch the pinion from underneath the housing. Okay, so now I have the housing just kind of leaning over and we're going to get the seal out, the pinion seal. And we're going to use just a hammer again. Now, remember, just like with the wheel, make sure you do not get the hammer digging into the actual housing. So, I barely have the hammer in here and I'm pulling just against the seal. You can see just that section part of the seal coming out. Okay, and so that's how I'm pulling on this to make sure that I'm not scarring up the housing. Okay, so here we have, I just kind of pried it out with a hammer. Remember, just pulling on this inner part so I didn't damage the housing. This is the seal. Okay, so you pull that out and set it aside. Next you have this little plate right here. Kind of like a little shim. And I think it also helps uh, keep the oil in there somehow. Okay, next you have the bearing, okay, the pinion bearing. So now we can see right through the entire housing. Okay, now right here, this is called the race. There's an inner and outer race, and I'll show you how to remove those. 
Okay, so here's our housing. So in the front, you see that there's the race. Okay, the silver part right here. And then in the back, there's also one. Here, right there. So to get these out, what we're going to do is just take a screwdriver and a hammer. And if you can see for that other race, see right there, see how there's a little chunk missing? Where you can put the hammer and pound it out? Okay, that's what we're going to do on both of them. Okay, so I just have the screwdriver right on that race. Okay, right on where the little piece is missing. I'm just going to tap it with a hammer. Okay, and then there's one on the other side too. Okay, and so we're just going to pound it until it pops out and then do the same on the inside one. Okay, so now I'm knocking out the other race that the pinion was riding on. So as you can see down in here, see how there's just a little chunk missing of the housing where it exposes the race? Okay, we're going to take a nice little chisel unit here. Okay, we're just going to set it right there. Okay, I'm just going to set it right on the edge and just pound it with a hammer and it'll pop right out. Okay, so here we are looking at the inside of the housing. And uh, I already knocked one of the races out. Now we're going for the one that the pinion rides on. So as you can see, we're just going to put our chisel here. Right there, there's a cutout in the axle assembly where the race is exposed. So we're just going to put our chisel there and pound. And then there's one on the other side. And we're going to just do that. And we're going to alternate tapping it a little bit here, tapping it a little bit there. And that way, the race will come out evenly. And it'll just pound right out. Alright, so now both the races are out and from this view you can really see those notches on the sides here that we were able to put our uh, chisel against and then pound. So now we're going to clean everything up and I'm also going to be paying attention right here to the front just to make sure that this is good and smooth and sealable. Make sure, you know, since I know that gears have been done on this car before, I want to make sure that nothing's been gouged up that's going to make the pinion leak. So, from this point, we have a completely hollowed out axle assembly. And so now I'm just going to get in here and degrease everything because the number one thing you want to make sure is that everything is completely clean. If you have metal shavings or anything like that floating up in there, then you know that can affect your new axle shafts and the gears and everything. So, I'm going to get a mop a mop broom and I'm going to put a you know a cloth on it and run it through the axle tubes to the center okay we're just going to clean it up the best that we can all right I've degreased the axle housing itself and now I'm going to do the important part and degrease inside the actual axle tubes and it's very important to get all the debris out of there so that it doesn't mess up our new axles so first thing I'm going to do is get some brake parts cleaner and I'm going to submerge a couple socks and spray some down in here. Okay, now I'm going to kind of wad up the first sock. Make sure it's good and soaked. Then I'm going to take the other sock that's attached to a broom handle. I'm just going to come in here and just clean everything, try to push everything to the very center so it pops back out inside the pumpkin. Okay, so now I'm going to clean out the inside. I'm just going to spray this thing out the best that I can and get it absolutely as clean as I can get it. Let it all drain out into the pan. And then, you know, before I actually do the install of the bearings and everything, I'm going to probably clean it again. This is just a preliminary cleaning. 